So whenever it comes to face extract, as you know, you can press Q, go under mesh tools and just select it from the mesh tools options. And then once you jump into it, you are able to then select your faces. And before we actually press spacebar and progress to the next level, I just want to introduce you to alt scrolling, which will change the modes. We see that the color will change with it. And we also see that at the bottom, the mode name is changing. So basically, if we press spacebar, we are going to jump into a solidification of solidifying a derived version of this mesh, which is different than what we're doing with the selection of Boolean. So to show that in action, we are just going to press space, and we see that we are now in a solidification phase. And with this particular mesh selected, let us press Q and jump into face extract again. And we see another curiosity, and it's that we get taken into local mode when it comes to our primary selection and this is so that if we need to select interior faces we're able to a lot easier however once we press spacebar and in this case we're jumping through selection of boolean so basically once we press spacebar we're back inside of non-local mode where we see all of our objects but we're able to solidify our mesh based off of our derived selection and begin making modifications to this shape even though we ordinarily would not be able to see inside of this with the default setup. So let's select this mesh again. We press Q, go under face extract, and we see that we now have only our selection in local mode where I'm now going to just select these pieces. And like I said, we could alt scroll and go through the various states, which we just talked about solidify. Let's alt scroll and jump to extract. Extract will simply take the mesh and just rip it off of the surface, making it into a new mesh, similar to what we would expect with curve extract in edit mode. Let's press spacebar just so you can see what I'm talking about. And if we press G, we see that we now have just this top plating of mesh. And to just show a particular use that we could do with this, let's press Q, bevel it. We'll press one in order to set our profile to 0.5. Let us press Q, go under add modifier and solidify to add a solidification. And we will just select both meshes, press Q, do difference, and with F9, let's change this to be exact. And just like that, we now have an exact Boolean happening with this particular mesh. However, we probably need to at least enable auto smooth. So now we have a Boolean mesh cutting into this, providing it with a bevel. However, we probably do need to bring back the original mesh and extend it just a little bit off of the surface since having it absolutely flush via the way that it was provided via the extraction just was not going to work out. Now we have something that's a little bit more optimal for our needs. In fact, to recap what we just went through with this mesh, we could press Q and shift click ever scroll and just begin rolling the wheel to begin rolling through the modifier process that we just went through with the wire display showing us every mesh that's actually affecting it, even though that mesh isn't actually showing. So back inside of face extract, which is a front end for selection of Boolean. We just jump into it. We're able to select our faces and with Boolean being our default mode, once we press spacebar, we are now inside of the next mode where we see that we have a variety of different options in our help panel showing. One of my favorites is the ability to press A to change it into a union, meaning that whenever we click, we actually are getting an outset of geometry pushing out of the surface. Previously, selection of bull was attempting to do this automatically, but it just was not working out for us. So it's been simplified just a little bit. And the best part of this particular workflow is once you click to apply, you have the Boolean selected, meaning you can immediately tap into edit mode, grab these points if needed, and let's say press Control Shift B in order to bevel these points. And just like that, we're able to quickly begin making modifications to this mesh without having to go through a whole lot of rigmarole whenever it comes to getting the right selection or deselecting the main shape or whatever the problem may be. So pressing Q, going into face extract again, we are just going to select everything, press spacebar, and just like that, we're able to jump this face selection inside, keeping everything still live. In fact, if we jump over to modifier scroll, we can see exactly what progress the mesh has been sent through. And if we want to improve our shading, we could always press Alt V E in order to just toggle the viewport cavity and shadows, just so we have something a little bit more appealing to look at. But let us press Q, go under mesh tools and choose face extract one more time. And from here, we're just gonna press space bar in order to turn this into a Boolean selection. 
And just like that, it's that easy to get in and quickly detail a surface just using selection of Boolean. So from here, let us just press Control N, make a new file, and we're just going to use just a little bit of box cutter. So I'm going to jump over to Ngon, and we're going to enable knife, so that way we're just cutting topology. And we're just going to cut in a pattern. We can't see anything because it was just a knife cut. So if we press Alt V and we enable wireframe, we actually see what's going on with the topology. So from here, let's press Q, choose face extract, and we can just select this face that we cut out, press space bar in order to extend this out. And from here, just convert this face into a Boolean cut. So there is some creativity. It will be derived out of this depending on how you use a tool. Another thing is that the cut that we did up top in order to get this particular face left us with something interesting on the side. So let us just press Q, go under mesh tools, choose face extract, and you see how when it comes to selecting this, we're having to select each face individually because of our knife cut actually adding an edge splitting this. Well, this is where the option add decimate comes in where basically if you press D, you can add a decimate onto the mesh that can decimate it, giving you something a little bit more simpler to work with just in case you need it. And from here, we can just grab this derived face and quickly bring it inwards without even having to deal with pausing it after the fact. So there is some additional functionality taken in consideration whenever it comes to face extract that is just simply not mentioned in the simple version of this video. We also see that we have the ability to change the solver on the fly with E. So if you ever need to change it, just pressing E will allow you to do that. However, I tend to work in fast unless exact is specifically needed since it does have a bit of a speed hit. But just to recap, if we were to press Q, go inside of face extract, we see that we have to select both of these faces to jump into it. Meaning if we press space bar, we might end up with something overlapping, which could be definitely problematic. Instead, we're just going to go into face extract. We could press D to decimate, meaning that we can now select this planar face without any issue, allowing us to get an even better result whenever it comes to cutting inwards. Whenever it comes to derived mesh generation, there's been quite a few attempts at it in the past, so let's go over just a couple of them. So with our cube, I'm just going to Shift D, duplicate this cube, and we're just going to press Q and perform a difference. Duplicate our cube over here as well and perform a difference select in this area and also perform a difference. So let's say that we wanted this face on top of this particular cube, even though it is comprised of modifiers. So we can't simply just go in edit mode, shift D, press P and separate this into its own mesh. However, I guess we can in this case, and then all we have to do is deal with selection. So let's attempt to do that fluidly. We will just tab in edit mode, select this top face, shift D, P, tab out of edit mode, select the right mesh, and then from here we're able to solidify and just get to work on this particular mesh without any issue. So really this is the workflow that we are competing with. So let's tap into edit mode and we will select this face and press Q and we see this option called curve extract. Now in object mode, it's less useful whenever it comes to the shift and control clicking of behaviors. However, in edit mode, this is where curve extract shines. So if we just shift click on curve extract, we are now able to extract this face off into a plane and it's derived from this initial mesh. In fact, we see that it also keeps the same modifiers. We could do it with the bottom face as well. And you know, this thing works great until it's not working so great. So we do see that there is a solution whenever it comes to just deriving meshes from other meshes. However, let's talk about another option and that is performing selection of Boolean. So we have this face selected and let's say we wanted to turn this into a Boolean. So we just click on selection of Boolean and we see that first we get the ability to inset and then when we click, we get the ability to extrude. So basically we can convert anything into an extrusion, but we see that the extrusion that we performed is in the shape of the face and not the shape of the derived face. In fact, the classic way that I used to handle it back in the day is I would select a mesh, shift click smart apply in order to create a clone and then quickly tap into edit mode, select the face, control I, delete everything and then press X. 
And from here, I have this face that I can then press I to inset. We delete the ring, tab back into object mode, and then we could press Q, solidify, maybe press two to push it out both ways. And then when we select the mesh and the target, we're able to perform a Boolean. So this is the workflow that we're definitely trying to counter because this is the system that I used for the longest whenever it came to getting derived meshes. So to show now what we are offered whenever it comes to selection of Boolean in object mode via the front end of face extract, if we just click on this, we're able to select the face, press space bar, quickly get in, begin making adjustments, and just like that, we were able to jump over everything previous and quickly get to the result. But the thing about selection of Boolean is that previously it was only available in edit mode. If we go under mesh tools, which was formerly ST3 mesh tools, but now is mesh tools, we go to selection of Boolean, and if we click and perform our extrusion, we see that our extrusion is shaped like the actual face of the original mesh without any modifiers. So this is definitely not the intended result for most users. So being able to use face extract would have came in handy for dealing with one of these jugs. So let's just take this particular example and control A just to apply everything. And I'm gonna select this edge and control click all the way to here to just dissolve that. And then to mirror it to the other side, we can just press Alt X and I will press D in order to choose symmetry from the D menu. And we will just mirror that to the other side. And from here, we can just jump into box cutter and just quickly just perform a box cut in order to just cut through this to the other side. However, we probably do want to be in orthographic mode in order to ensure that we cut through to the other side properly. So if we press Q and we go under our options of face extract, I am now painting in the selection that we just cut in using a knife tool, pressing space bar. And here we're cutting into it, but if we wanted to have it just like the ref, we could press A to turn this into a union. And just like that, we've now union added this piece derived off of what we just cut inside of it using a knife tool and then joined it using face extract. So we still also have the functionality to be able to press Q and go under array and press X in order to change which axis we're dealing with. And then of course, right upwards. So that way we have something similar to our reference, but just like that, we're able to derive off of this mesh and add it to it, which makes things a lot easier whenever it comes to doing Boolean cleanup in regards with subdivision. When it comes to using selection of Boolean, you also have the ability to filter out bevels. So here I'm adding a bevel with six segments, which as we know, will add a lot of geometry and make this a very complicated selection. But let us press Q and go inside a face extract. And instead of selecting all of these faces like you see me doing, we're just gonna press W in order to remove the last bevel from the calculation. And we'll just press spacebar in order to derive our mesh without the bevel being present. And then from here, just perform our cut inward. And just like that, operation is complete. Of course, in order to make it accommodate, we will need to select the mesh and lower down the amount of bevel happening. But just like that, we were able to extract this mesh and cut into it while omitting the bevel, which just made for an easier day when it came to converting this to a selection of Boolean. In closing, one thing I do want to illustrate is that selection of Boolean and face extract are two separate things that are working in conjunction with each other as in face extract is a front end for selection of boolean to be able to work in object mode and to show that in action i'm just going to jump down to this angled view and we're just going to grab this edge and just press Control b and just bevel it real quick and with box cutter active we're just going to jump over and just perform a cut using box cutter we'll press Control x and turn it into a knife cut and from here, we can just go under Mesh Tools in our Q menu and jump to Face Extract. So I'm just going to select all of the faces we just cut, and we'll just press Space Bar, where we get something unsatisfactory, and then we click to perform our cut inwards, and we see that it's just not working out. However, if we press Alt-Z, we can see exactly what we're getting when we cut in, even though it looks like it's doing nothing on the outside. Really what we're getting is a mesh error based off of an issue that we see in this particular area but we will get to that. So what we'll do is go ahead and perform our cut inwards and we will just press Alt C in order to see it from object mode. We could always press two to cut in as much as we're cutting out, which assures us exactly how much we're cutting inside. But let's just click to apply. And with this mesh still showing, because with 
something like this, there's always going to be some troubleshooting. We know that this is the point causing issues, so we're just going to select this, select this point, press M, merge at last, and we see that now we have the intended result. So we can press Q and go back to Mesh Tools and Act, or actually we could press Q go to solidify and make adjustments to this shape that we're getting without having to go in and derive the mesh again. I don't know what I was thinking just a second ago, but just like that, we're able to go in and make fine adjustments to the solidification that's happening in the event that we need to, you know, even select it, press alt X in order to mirror it across itself, which we see also causes it to have some issues, probably because we need to cut off this area. So we're just going to red box that out and we see that we're still getting some hotline issues. So based off of everything else talked about in the release log, you know that you can always go up to the top, click on the bevel icon, which is also the bevel bull helper. And we can always change our system to be either fast or exact. We can try what happens when we get exact. We see that we need to probably solve it under fast. So by tabbing into edit mode, we're just jumping in and looking at what we received as a result of our operation. And I think that this area where there were two near misses that did not merge was the culprit now allowing us to get the intended result for this selection of bullion. So just wanted to let users know that whenever you jump in and you use face extract, this is just a front end telling you where you want to go. If you were to alt scroll and jump to solidify, once we press space bar, we're jumping into the modal of solidify versus if we just hit spacebar, we're just going to apply the mesh, derive this off of it and receive this as a mesh that we can use as a jump off, which has nothing to do with the target. But whenever we use selection of Boolean, the moment that we press spacebar, notice the help and that whenever we press spacebar, we've now changed over to the tool selection of Boolean, which has its own options and behaviors, as in we could press spacebar and choose which operation we're performing. For example, we can jump to extrude and begin extruding on this mesh. We can press spacebar and choose if we want to apply these modifiers on exit or we can actually go back and click to not have that happen. But let's just confirm it and we've now applied those modifiers on this mesh, giving us this as our result. Of course, if we want that to reflect on the bottom, we could just press Alt X and mirror that to the bottom like so. But just wanted to just remind users that, you know, face extract is a pathway to three different directions. And so do expect some anomalies whenever it comes to the help changing but just keep that in mind you should definitely have a much more organic experience when it comes to using this